In this video, we are taking apart my Nissan GTR transmission valve body. We're putting it all back together, and then we're putting this transmission through its paces to fully test it. We're also gonna see just how modified this kind of mysterious car is by hitting the dyno. Is that, is that pretty good? Yeah, that's really good. And who knows what else? Whoa, whoa, flash and check engine light. Are you okay? But I am hoping that I didn't use up all of my luck in the first episode because this is the best deal on a car that I've gotten in a long time. I bid live and won my clean title, no accident 2009 GTR from an auction that listed it as having transmission issues and I was able to confirm the car had no second gear and couldn't be driven on the road. They also listed this GTR as having 62,000 miles. Now the car spent most of its life in Canada and they specifically listed the odometer in miles so I didn't think much of it. I was good with 62,000 miles but after winning the car, I dug into the Carfax some more and realized they made a big error. When the car made it back to the States, they never switched from kilometers to miles and connecting my scanner confirmed this car only has 38,000 miles. Drink every time I say miles. This is a big win as I only paid $47,000 for the car and a 38,000 mile clean title GTR is worth upwards of $65,000 in today's market. I was also able to get it to shift just by resetting the transmission control unit adaptations, but because I wanted to be 100% sure I fixed the transmission, I took it apart, I discovered some upgraded parts and some issues that need to be sorted. Hopefully the GTR gods are willing to accept a mostly American and German car guy into the family and my luck continues. So let's get right back to work with probably the most important part of this project. In the last video, I removed a couple of stickers that were on the side of the car that I didn't like. Uh, they were only worth like five horsepower. My legit street car stickers are worth 12 wheel. And we're gonna put one back here. There we go, 12 wheel right there, all wheel horsepower. All right, now I'm torn. I put one on the little window. Does it look better there or there? I don't know. All right, if you guys were around for the last video, then you're basically Nissan GTR transmission experts, or at the very least, you know that we have some pistons here that operate these shift forks here. So when these forks move back and forth, it changes the gears in the transmission. And although we fix the lack of second gear in this car just simply by resetting adaptations, and because we know we have the updated piston clips right here that were a known issue on the early GTR transmission, we are good to simply clean the valve body and reinstall and I did find that we have a little bit of debris here and some right in there. It's kind of all over the place. And I learned that that's somewhat common, especially if you know your transmissions had a little bit of work done and they haven't changed out the fluid more than once. It makes farty noises if you move that back and forth, but the pistons have magnets that report back to the transmission computer so they know the orientation and they know what gear the car should be in. And so if we have any debris like that, it could throw that reading off if the piston got temporarily stuck a little. So we need to take these out and clean them. The pistons are held in by a little snap ring. So we're gonna use our snap ring pliers to remove this guy, just like that. And now we should be able to push this out. There we go. So we have a cap with a seal. Oh, and I see some magnets right there. All right, there we go, coming out. All right, there we go. We can see our magnets on both sides and that is going to get picked up by this sensor right here. Now it's very important that we just do one of these at a time and that we don't accidentally go in that way that could throw off our readings. So all I'm gonna do is use a clean microfiber, a little bit of brake clean. And we'll just clean these up, wipe everything off. Look at that. As long as there's no scoring, we're gonna be in really good shape. So that's everything we got off of this one. And here's what we have. Nice and shiny and smooth. That's what we want. And although these are the updated clips, I, I bought more updated clips. And while we're here, we're just gonna change them out. Why not? So they just come off like that. And you can see the little hole right there. So you just line that up with the clip and simply pop it back in, we're good. And it's equally as important to clean out the inside bore as well. And yeah, you can see it's just a little dirty. And we'll get in here, clean up where the sensor picks up too. And we'll get in this one too, nice. This is looking beautiful. And then we'll just get this nice and lubricated before it goes in. All right, piston going back into its home. Go home, piston. That's your home! Are you too good for your home? Answer 
me! I'll be moving forks again soon. Don't you worry. Now we're going to put our little cap back in. Look at that. And we'll compress our clip back in as well. Kind of push it all in there as a unit. Get in there, clip. There we go. All right. A little bit more lubrication. There we go. Oh, yeah. Perfectly smooth. Before, I was getting a little bit of resistance, and that is not good. You want this to be very clean. Now, I was going to split this valve body in half and really get in there, but from my research, it seems like those magnets pretty much pick up everything. So, it's kind of a good thing and a bad thing. They protect metal from really going anywhere else. But then after a while, it could build up and cause those pistons to have an issue moving. But uh, basically, if you're going to do a fluid service on your GTR, and if you're going to drop that pan, the valve body is not that difficult to take out. I highly recommend doing this. Check this out. I took another piston out, and look what I found right below it. This looks to be a piece of plastic. I think I know what they're doing. You see this hole right here? And then you see the hole right at the bottom of the clip. Before we go back together with the valve body, there's a special Nissan tool for this, but you can use a paper clip and you go in from the bottom and you stick this in so that these are lined up this way. The forks need to contact from the top here. And I think they were using a piece of plastic, whoever did this before, to hold that for some reason and it, and it got left behind. So I, I don't think it was causing an issue, but uh, we're gonna remove this little piece. Wow, that's crazy. That's got to be what this is. Okay, more reason to take apart your Nissan GTR valve body. <laughs> you never know what you're going to find. Chances are, though, if the trans was built by a reputable shop, they had those tools. But what if the last guy tried to get it fixed with a service somewhere and they dropped a piece of plastic fork in there? That's kind of what it looks like. Hang on, that just gave me an idea. The GTR has got this white overspray on the seat. This fork is awesome takes it right off. This is what the seat looked like before, and here's what it looks like after. No white speckles. And hang on, while I'm here, I gotta show you guys how to fix a worn out leather seat bolster at home for not a lot of money, because this kit from Clyde's has everything you need to do this in four easy steps. First up, we're gonna use the awesome leather cleaning foam, and we'll just do the entire seat. And second up is the leather prep and deglaze. This is gonna remove any wax or grease. Next, we have the fun part, the recoloring balm. So we'll just put a little bit on their applicator pad, and then you're simply going to wipe it on, like so. This is gonna soak right into the leather. And guys, don't use shoe polish on your leather seats. It dries out the leather, it makes it hard, and it makes it crack. This will do the complete opposite of that it'll actually replenish the leather and your seat will feel like nice and supple again. And I've been using the Clyde's kit for years, so it's really good for bolster spot repairs. And it's also good for complete leather restoration like I did on my ML55. Those seats were in horrible condition, so this is what they looked like before and this is what they looked like after. Massive difference, took me about an hour to do this entire interior. Once you're done with the application, you simply wipe off any excess with a clean microfiber. Last step is the leather leather conditioning cream. So this is gonna seal in all the work that we just did. After the leather conditioner, you'll have a beautiful seat. So this is what the bolster looked like before. Pretty typical wear for a 15 year old sports car. But for just a couple of dollars and a few minutes of your time, you could have a bolster that looks like this. Oh, and guys, don't worry about this coming off on your clothes. You're supposed to let it dry for a few hours, but even just after a couple of minutes, nothing comes off. And Clyde's has many different colors for their leather restoration bombs and their kits include everything you need. Now, the best part is if you guys wanna save 10% off of everything on the Clyde's website, you can click on my link down below and use coupon code LEGIT10 or instead, if you wanna save even more, you can take their quiz and get 20% off. And so with that, Back to the transmission. All right, now I'm gonna show you probably the most important parts of doing this job is once you get your clips in, you wanna verify that these pistons are in the right spot because they have the magnets inside of them that have to correspond with these pickup sensors. So for example, you can see here, that our paper clip sticks to this side of the piston, but it doesn't to this side. That means that we have the magnet on this side of the piston. You can't see it right now, so this is important to verify, and that ensures that the pickup will read it. I really wanna drive this home because you can mess up your transmission if you get this wrong, but if you were to flip this around and then install the clip, you could totally do that, and then there's no magnet on this side to pick up. If we flip it around, now we have a magnet inside of the piston. So you can definitely mess this up and it can cause these to move back and forth when they're not supposed to. And if the wrong fork gets moved at the wrong time, it could lock your entire transmission
transmission, and in some cases, crack the whole case and, and you're done for. So get yourself this insanely expensive, highly specialized tool. I'll leave a link down below. I'm gonna sell these for $149.99. And this looks like an S. Remember the S's you used to make in grade school? That's what this is. I'm just kidding, it's a paper clip. You just need a paper clip. All right guys, everything is cleaned up and our last step before we install the valve body is something that's very important. See that little cotter pin I put in there? That is to lock the piston in place. Otherwise, if we're going up and this thing spins like that, it's not gonna fit inside of that fork. So I just found some cotter pins that just happened to work and I'm just spreading them out like this. And then through the bottom, you can see the little hole that we can slide it into. And once you've found the hole on the other end, there we go, just pop in a little like that. Okay, so these guys are locked, two more to do. She's going back in. And we'll do a little launch control. There's two transmission filters. This is where one of them lives. And we did find an aftermarket filter. This is $200 just for this. So kind of crazy. Part of the reason it's so expensive is because it is reusable and the paper filters from the factory are $100. So you're gonna do this a few times, you're in good shape. Something I wanna show you guys is the oil passage hole right there. It needs to be lined up with this baffle. And it's always good to lubricate this seal. We'll borrow some transmission fluid from the car. And then this is gonna slide right in here. There we go, perfect. Then we just have our cap here that threads right in. And this cap was really loose when I took this off. So I don't know what the deal was there. All right, we're definitely giving this a little Alex click. Click, oh my gosh, I think like I literally had a pop in my elbow. <laughs> I'm a human torque wrench because I'm getting old. Oh my, did you guys hear that? Freaking breaking my elbow here on this GTR. Better be worth a transmission. Next, we're gonna put a brand new transmission filter, but I wanna show you guys something. See how this has the orange seal? Sometimes the old one gets stuck inside. Wow, this thing is really stuck in there. Okay, there we go. Jeez, that might be the original and they kept on just taking it off of the new filter and leaving that in. That is, that's weird. Do you guys remember towards the end of the last video, I called Shep transmissions, they build like crazy GTR transmissions. And I asked them if they kept a record by VIN and they said they do. So I emailed them the last six of my VIN. He just emailed me back. Hi Alex, stage one from June, 2022. John Shepard. This has a stage one transmission. So just in parts alone, I think it's like $4,300. And it updates a ton inside of the transmission and the gear selector ring that says www.dodsonmotorsports. That is an upgrade. It's like a thousand dollar upgrade. and. In June of 2022, according to the Carfax, it was like a thousand miles ago. So this has a brand new built transmission and with labor and everything, I, I don't know, this is probably $8,000, $9,000, something like that. Big, big win. This is like the perfect combination, an upgraded transmission and a stock engine, stock turbo car. So it wasn't really that beat on. So God, this just, it keeps on getting better. This allows me to do more mods though now, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I'm on cloud nine right now, guys. That's like the Achilles heel of these earlier GTRs and this one is brand new. So here we are with our valve body, our pins are all in place. So this should go right in. There we go, nice, perfect. And I got a bolt ready to go. It's being held in and I will pull these pins out. Don't forget the pins, people. All right, special Nissan tools. Maybe I should sell these. The clips are $15 each, so these are worth at least 10. I know what I got. There's only five reusable bolts for the valve body. All right, 97 inch pounds is all this valve body takes. Valve bodies are always a very tiny amount of torque. So just always think of it in inch pounds. So if you see 97, just don't think foot pounds. You'll break this off immediately. We're Newton meters. All right, she's in, double check. Okay, valve body is installed. Now we can go ahead and click in all of our connectors. Very satisfying clicks here. I gotta say I'm finding a lot of really nice things with Japanese engineering. Look at this. So they have a notch here and right there. And then you push your connector in. There we go, it slides in place. You can see it lines up nicely. And then we have this nice clip right on the bottom, just like that. And then the connector just spins right on. Beautiful. So they have a heat shield around the connector and it has a literal button. I've never seen a button before. Wow. 
<laughs> I'm in awe here cleaning up the mating surface. We don't want to forget though, our transmission filter, our other transmission filter. There we go. Next up, we have the transmission pan. And I, I got to say, they sign gasket like a professional MLB baseball player would. That's really cool. Shout out to Jack's transmissions. By the way, I've met a ton of GTR companies in the last couple of episodes. None of them sponsored me or anything, but very nice people so far. The guys at Dobson Motorsports, Shep Transmissions, Jack Transmissions, lots of, wow. I just realized they're all like transmission places that I've been talking to. I don't know if that's good or bad. All right, transmission pan going in. Sucks itself in. Wouldn't that be cool if they made it magnetic so it would just hold itself? That'd be really cool. I invent that. Although it's an aluminum transmission case, so I have to make a steel transmission. This is why I'm not an inventor, people. Okay, we now have a record 21 bolts to Zip Zam Zoo into this transmission. All right, I just kind of picked a sequence there. That is all torqued. Now it's time for one of my favorite Japanese car parts ever, which is this little pipe slash tube that's gonna go in like that and thread in. And then we tighten this. Okay, click. All right, so that is to set the transmission fluid level. So on a lot of modern cars, especially fancy stuff like this, you have to fill it from the bottom from here, let the engine warm up, let the transmission warm up for a while and then drain some and watch it bubbling out and all this craziness. Not Nissan, they, they made it like a differential. Look at this. If we remove this heat shield, there are 410s holding it on. Okay, just like that. We have our transmission fill right here. So with a 10 millimeter Allen and the power of a ratchet, we can pull this guy out like that. And then we're just gonna use this cheap pump that you can buy in any auto parts store or Amazon for about 10, 15 bucks to fill the transmission. And my favorite part is that we can use Amsoil automatic transmission fluid. And normally this would call for DCT fluid, which is extremely expensive. So if you went to Nissan to buy this fluid for what we're doing right now, it would be about $600. And we're gonna do it for a small fraction of that price by using the Amsoil automatic transmission fluid. And the best part is we're not cheaping out or anything like that. This is exactly what they use on a lot of the six and seven second quarter mile race GTRs. So some of the biggest shops in the country use the Amsoil in this and actually works better. So we're definitely going back together with the good stuff. And this fluid is red. It smells just like the stuff that came out. So they probably used Amsoil. Okay, so now we are just pumping the transmission fluid in. And as soon as we start seeing it drip out of there, we know that it's full. So we don't have to warm up the transmission and pump it in while it's running and all sorts of madness. Very nice and easy. And it's fun. Sounds cool too. It's like drinking up the last of the chocolate milk with a straw. Remember those days? And one's empty. Move on to the next and keep on going. Oh, there it is. A little bit more for the kids. All right, so now that's coming out, we will stop it from coming out. So just make sure to tighten up both of your plugs and you have now successfully changed the transmission fluid and filters on your Nissan GTR. Congratulations. You know, we got to do our differential fluid, which very well may have been done when they did the transmission. Highly doubt they would rebuild a transmission and not do this, but you never know. Okay, that's the fill. There we go. Here we go. Please no chunks. Please no chunks. Oh, beautiful. The fluid looks brand new, but we'll we'll just start over with fluid just on the whole car. We're gonna go back together with the Amsoil Severe Gear 75 W140. And this does have additive for a limited slip. And these pouches are really cool. You don't need any kind of pump. You just squeeze it in. And this does take two quarts total. Let's see, once we start seeing it come out where we're good. All right, we got our fluid coming out, so we are golden. That's the perfect level you want it to be at. All right, tighten this thing up. Rear differential fluid change is done. Definitely don't pay anyone to do this, guys. There's a lot of DIY stuff that you can do at home, even on fancy cars like a GTR. I'm gonna assume the engine oil doesn't have too many miles on it. Let's, let's take a look. Okay, well, it looks kind of normal. I mean, the trans was done a year and a half ago. Maybe they didn't change the oil at the same time. Who knows? Smells good though, no fuel, nothing. It actually was probably done at the dealer. This car's got a ton of records at the dealer throughout its entire life in Canada and in the United States. We'll get our baby Nissan oil filter out of here. There we go. Oh, of course, we're going back together with a new Amsoil filter. Not too tight people on the oil filters. 
All right, let's fill this thing back up. It's got a Nismo oil cap. Is that factory? I don't, I don't know. Of course, we're going back together with the good stuff, our little Amsoil Lini. It's Italian Amsoil now? I don't know. Drink up Godzilla. It's, God, it's Godzilla milk. Easy to fill the oil out. That's all I got to say right now. You don't need a funnel or anything. Thank you. Thank you, Japanese engineers. So far, this has been an absolute pleasure to work on. Knock on really nice aluminum intake. All right, well, the front was brand new as well. I topped it up and we are good there too. The drain's in a great spot, but the fill is right there. It just needs a little extension. It's not horrible, but differential is good. No leaks from the engine. We're golden. All right, so I'm gonna put all the panels back on. Uh, we'll take it for a test drive. If everything feels good, we're gonna try out launch control with with no tires. All right, you know, before we go for a ride, I have to remove this lip before it removes itself. Okay, there we go. Stuck on this one here. Yeah, just getting ripped out. Okay, goodbye. Well, hey, at least I can build a house now with all of this hardware. So this is what the factory front lip looks like. And I think it looks great. I'm just gonna look for another one of those and uh, figure out how to attach it to this. This is all factory, not, not that, but this piece right here is all factory. One, two, three. <laughs> this thing's gonna be fast. Oh, there we go, six gear. Oh, wow, that was awesome. Buttery smooth. That's great. I have to get gas. Who knows how old this gas is, so we don't wanna beat on it with old gas. So uh, I'm gonna do that and drive it around a little bit, make sure the trans is good. And then we're gonna, we're gonna ease into this thing. We'll start off with some half throttle and, and see what happens. And yeah, I'm like, oh man, I'm a little nervous. Like we're gonna see if this, this transmission is actually going to hold up to some GTR power. I had to slow down there for some tracks. So I'm gonna, so I'll, I'll give it a little. And that's like quarter throttle. Okay, gotta get gas. All right, I actually drove this thing around quite a bit. I just wanna get all of this fuel uh, circulated, so I just took it on the highway for a while and then I actually went and got fuel again. So this will be the first time going and I'm gonna start off with like a uh, half throttle and just kind of see what happens. Okay. So far, so good. Trans shifted absolutely perfectly. That was good, that was good. All right guys, this is it. Let's see what she's got. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Whoa. I don't know if this thing is like as stock as we think it is. Are you kidding me? That was insane. Is that what stock GTRs are like? There's no way. All right. <laughs> I like this car even more. Wow, it took it great though. The trans, I mean, 2009 dual clutch. This is the early days of dual clutch and they, they got it down, man. That is beautiful. All right, so I didn't go all the way down. That was probably like 80% throttle or something like that. All right, let's do this. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. All right, so let's go GTR. GTR launch. Whoa. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Flash and check engine light. What in the world? Why? It's still flashing. Oh, now it's gone. What? Okay, it's running good though. Like it's not misfiring. What? And the check engine light is gone. Oh my gosh, I'm like shaking here. All right. Uh, yeah, it sounds great. No misfiring, nothing. Are you okay? Yeah, this seems to be fine. Super smooth, everything's good. So normally a flashing check engine light indicates a catalyst damaging misfire. So a misfire is so bad that it'll ruin your catalytic converter. It typically has to do with it dumping a ton of fuel. But normally when that happens, the normal check engine light will just stay once, you know, once it's done flashing. And then also this flashed really fast. Like a normal flashing check engine light is, is much slower. But the car pulled really strong. Uh... Okay, flashing check engine light, Nissan GTR. Okay, I don't know why I'm doing this because like, you know, it would just be a misfire. Um, okay, the Google AI indicates a severe issue, should be serviced immediately, that's all, whatever. Engine light blinking is not 
sensor detecting knock. Usually down to bad fuel, especially if your car has been sitting. Okay, is that factory? I just read through a bunch of forum posts. This one says your car is probably tuned with ECU tech. So this other guy posted with the exact same issue and that means you're getting knock. Wait a minute, this. so this is like a fail safe. Dash light blinks on acceleration. Yeah, they're all talking about this ECU tech and it'll pull three degrees of timing or more, could be less depending on the tuner. Is this thing tuned? Dude, I knew it, it felt so fast. I mean, I know they're fast from the factory, but that's gotta be an indication of, of a tune. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so far this thing has a built transmission and I think it's tuned. I got to dig into this guys, hang on. I just spoke with the tuning twins and they said if I turn the cruise control off and then I think it was set or no, we go down with, the, oh, look at that. Look, hold on, watch. When I go down and then I go up, we can change the amount of boost it makes. Get out of here. So this is stock one, two, three settings for that and we can hit it at 20 psi of boost dude this thing is definitely tuned what else can we do this is awesome <laughs> i never thought i'd be so excited after seeing a flashing check engine light after making a pull in a really fast car normally that's all bad but i mean it is still kind of bad because that's knock detection so why are we getting knock I don't know. Now guys, something else I just read about is if we hold cancel, that goes to nothing, and then coolant temp goes to 33, and then it should pop back up, there you go. I think you can configure that to be whatever. I'm not exactly sure what 33 is, but most people use it as an ethanol content. But I, I just got regular 93, there's no way it's got 33% ethanol, so I don't know. I don't know what the 33 is, but this is all just pointing to the fact that this thing is definitely, definitely tuned, so. That's kind of cool. We need to go back to the shop though, and I want to pull some spark plugs because this car has 38,000 miles, and who knows? It might have the original plugs in there that are 15 years old, so let's go. All right, we'll let this engine cool down a bit, pull some plugs, and see what we can see. Yeah, we should probably do a compression test too. So it looks like we have to remove the intake plenum in order to get to the coils. Maybe just the throttle bodies, but uh, it might just be easier to just take the whole plenum off and give us a bunch of room in there. All right, first things first, we need to remove this cover. They sell a cool carbon fiber one that I might get one day. All right, there we go. And I'm gonna leave the throttle bodies connected, so we'll have to disconnect the air intake tubes going to them. Hopefully there's enough room, just there we go. Yeah, get it out of the way like that. I'll unplug some sensors here. I think these are intake air sensors. Okay, cool. Here are the hoses going to our blow up valves. Disconnect those as well. Hang on, you know something I completely forgot about looking at were the air filters. So they have to be connected to this pipe that goes to the front. And I think if we remove this, we'll be able to see them. All right, so I've taken all of the clips out. This pops up like that. Oh, look at that. Very nice, very nice. These could definitely use a cleaning not too bad and they're getting some decently fresh air right through here. People comment sometimes when I have a hot air intake like this, the turbo on my Trans Am is basically right behind the radiator. There's a lot of boosted cars that are set up this way. In my experience, it doesn't actually make a big real world difference if you have a good intercooler system, but I finally have like a cold air induction system. So that'll make some people really happy. Okay, I've loosened this filter up. There is no room to get this out at all. It won't go that way either. I have a feeling you have to kind of like pull back the bumper. It's really not that that dirty and I may have this front bumper off in a future video so I'm not gonna mess with it right now it's not that bad and we have spark plugs to get to all right I've unplugged a few vacuum references on both sides and any and all connectors this does have coolant running to both of the throttle bodies and I don't want to open that system yet I'm gonna try and cheat the intake out with the throttle bodies and these connected we'll at least take off the brackets I think I've disconnected everything now we just have a few tens go right down the line here all right, can I cheat this out of the way? All right, come on now. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I think I could just do one of these. Oh, yeah, perfect. I don't have to mess with any of those coolant hoses going to our throttle body. Little oily there, no big deal. Wow, this is a nice gasket. Good job, Nissan. It's like a copper gasket. Sweet. Probably could have reused this. I just spent like 80 bucks on this one from the dealership. Feel a little ripped off, but not really. Let's get to this. 
So the GTR does have normal port injectors, and I learned that these blue injectors are the stock ones. You can get a pretty decent look at the valves too, and because it's port injected, these things are pretty clean. All right, hang on, you know how much I love boroscoping stuff. This is the beauty of port injection. The valves just stay new for so long. You have gas literally cleaning them off. There's your fuel injector just spraying right on there. And there's a couple more. And here are some that are slightly open. What can we see in there? Cylinder looks nice and clean so far. Looking good and looking good. I've disconnected the coils on this side. And it's just a 10 mil. And I don't know, just looking at the amount of dust and no broken clips and stuff like that over here. I don't think anyone's ever been in here. These could be the original spark plugs, 15 years old. So you have to use a 14 on these spark plugs. Okay, definitely wasn't over Titan. That's good. There we go, there we go. What do we got, what do we got? What are these guys? I don't think they're that old. So we have new on the right, old on the left, and these are gapped down just a little bit. Factory is 0 0.031, these are at 0 0.026. I talked to my tuners, they like to gap it down a little bit when you're running on ethanol, so it is possible that they were running a mix of 93 and ethanol. I don't think they were going full E85 though with those stock fuel injectors, but it's possible. And when we're getting that 33 readout in the cluster, I did some reading that that could just be how much ethanol is in the in the tank, but I doubt it. I went through, I filled it all the way up and ran it down to a couple of gallons. I don't know, I don't know. We'll keep digging here. Let's take the rest of the plugs out. All the plugs are out. They look very, very consistent, pretty clean. These have definitely been replaced at some point. Maybe a tad lean though, not too bad. Usually when it looks really white, that means it's really lean. This is more of a yellowish, brownish, so Eh, AFR is probably close. We'll definitely stick the wideband in the tailpipe though on our next test drive. But I spoke to the tuners and they're like, if you're gonna run E85 or any kind of mix of ethanol, we should lower the gap. And I'm like, all right, I'm probably gonna do that. So let's gap. All right, so if you guys have been watching the CL65 series, then you know where we are. We're in, well, transmission central and also gap central. So we have our spark plug and we have our neat gapping tool. This is a longer plug, so we'll open this up. Get it in there, flip this over. We're shooting for about 0 0.022. And so we'll close this up right on our gapping tool. We don't wanna to go too far. Right about there is good. Now we'll loosen it up. All right, let's see what we did here. Yeah, it's still a little loose. Sometimes you need a thinner feeler gauge because there's a little bit of rebound back. So we'll tighten it up right to where you can't pull this out. And that should do it. Yeah, right there, perfect. So it's not loose. It's not too hard to get in there. There we go. Five more to go, and then these plugs are ready for the eventual flex fuel E85 setup that we're gonna go with, bigger fuel pumps, bigger injectors. You know how this is gonna go, guys. We're gonna make some power with this GTR. But if you're curious, these are the factory plugs, and at the dealer, they're 38 dollars, which is insane. I got them a little cheaper at the auto parts store for 25 a piece, but these Nissan GTR plugs are still more expensive individually than my twin turbo V12 Mercedes. I got those for like 15, but there's 24 of them. So that definitely cost more. I found some information on decoding a date code on NGK spark plugs. See how it says K038. The K stands for what factory it was made in. And then the first digit is the last digit of the year. So in this case, it's a zero. So that would be 2020. So these could be, you know, a little bit over four years old and on a car that's tuned potentially on different fuel. I don't know if they ever used ethanol. You want to replace your plugs probably every 15,000, 20,000 miles. It's kind of cheap insurance. So it is possible that these plugs are slightly fouled out just from being in here for a while. This is a great opportunity to do a compression test. So I want to disable the fuel pump and I found right here is labeled fuel pump, but you can't get this out without getting this stuff out. So I removed some clips, move that out of the way. And I did see this. This looks a little aftermarket to me, this 30 amp fuse. Where does that go? Yeah, this, this doesn't look factory either. I don't know if that's normal. Okay, some padding. This is a cool Vintag right here, made in Japan. That's sweet. If we follow this 30 amp fuse down, it goes to this, a solid state DRL module. And I looked it up, it's right here. So if you guys saw the reveal video, you know my headlights stay on all the time. And that's it. This car was in Canada for quite a few years and that's part of their regulation. Along with switching the odometer to kilometers, which I'm still trying to figure out how to get that back to miles. Hold on a second. I think I can do the cabin filter while we're in there. There we go. Sweet. Do a little house cleaning as well. So now we should be able to get this out of the way. I can get this guy out. We have fuel pump right on top. Okay, I got the 15 amp fuse out, but 
I dropped it. It's somewhere in here, I can't see it. I'm pretty much gonna have to replace it, but look at this, we can see our dust filter in here. All right, this isn't the exact way you're supposed to do this. You're supposed to take the glove box out, but these things are so flexible. You can just pull it out the top if you have all of that out already. Yeah, it's not too bad. Of course, I ordered up a new cabin filter from Amsoil. It came with the engine oil and transmission fluid and everything. Kind of hard to film inside of here, but there is our new cabin filter. These things are just super flexible. So they go right in and you're done. Now we'll have fresh air. All right, compression tester is connected. Let's see what we got on the first cylinder. All right. All right, next cylinder. All right, pretty much the same, that's good. And when you're compression testing, especially in an engine that you don't suspect has any issues, you don't even really need to know the spec. Just make sure that the battery is charged up and that you're cranking it for the same amount of time for each cylinder. And as long as it, you know, lines up pretty close, you're good. Cylinder three. Yep, perfect. All right, next. Okay. All right. Good. All right, last cylinder. Yay. Woo. I still get nervous when doing compression tests, even on engines that run really good like this one. You, you never know if it's off by a little bit. I mean, even if one was down by like 30 PSI, you might not know, like it might run pretty good, but then that would indicate an issue, but we're good. Newly gapped spark plugs are now ready to go back in. And I've shown and talked about this in a few videos, but just in case we have some new subscribers, most modern spark plugs don't need any anti-seize. So typically if the threads are shiny like that, they are coated and you don't need to do anything with them. But if you see the older black ones, uh, you do need to put a little bit of anti-seize on there or they'll get stuck in the head. So these NGKs, they don't need anything. Also, they tell you exactly how to torque the spark plug right on the box. So this first step is just make the spark plug bottom out. And then if you have a tapered seal, so no washer, it's just 1 16th of a turn. And then if you do have the washer like we have, it's gonna be a half turn. And you can see the difference in that washer size. The one on the left, the used spark plug has been crushed already. That doesn't mean you can't remove these and put them back in. But when you do that, you're only gonna need probably about a 16th to an eighth of a turn. So with that, we can go back together with our new spark plugs. Definitely thread these in by hand. Don't use any power tools. It's not worth saving a couple minutes and stripping out a head. You can use it once you've started the thread if you want, but I don't like to take chances with stuff that can be a nightmare later on. All right, that's it. That's threaded. And we'll line this up centered, do our half turn, and that's it. It's torqued. Oh, and hang on, before I get all the plugs in, you know, I got a boroscope and just, just see if we have forged pistons or anything crazy going on in here. I, Highly doubt it. Stock turbo car, stock injectors. Well, unless they demodded everything, but the motor, I, I don't know. I mean, hey, it's got a built trans. One can one can hope and wish. Let's see what we got here. Are these forged pistons? Let's see if there's any markings that tell us anything. Those are just valve reliefs cut into the pistons. That's totally fine and normal to see. A uh, little carbon. No big deal. There's a dot on the piston on the left that just tells you that it faces forward. And it says number three on the top there. And then, okay, there's some stamping there all the way to the right. Something F-O, I think. Uh, let's take a look at a different one. Yeah, it's really hard to see any of the stampings there. Let's see, K, K1, there's a zero five there. Huh. Uh, I mean, I'm just gonna say these look to be stock the cylinder walls look really good everything looks fine i can't find anything solid on this guys um uh, yeah i'm not finding any forum threads about what the stock pistons look like i'm just gonna say they're probably stock though just looking at the rest of the car it looks like you know everything is stock except for some intakes and maybe the tune and whatever they did with the exhaust there but if you know any better let me know in the comments can you verify if these are indeed the stock pistons i will be doing a full detail video cosmetic restoration but we got to we gotta get this out. All right, Kyle's going back in. All the plugs are done, coils are in. I have a little bit of brake cleaner on a rag. We'll just clean up this intake a little bit. And this mating surface as well. Overall, very clean. Everything looks beautiful. I'm just, I'm just not sure about the Nismo cap, guys. I, I might go back to stock. Before this intake goes on, I always look inside of the intake, and I did this a few times. Just make sure nothing fell in there. You should tape it off too. That's, that's a good practice to get used to. I'd bought a used engine for 
my 99 Cobra that had the intake on and everything. And there was an injector clip that was inside of there. It got sucked up. I got really lucky and it just got caught underneath the valve and I got it out and we're good. Anyway, there's our $82 gasket from Nissan. And now we can flop this intake right back into position. Engine wiring harness getting in the way. Get out of here. There we go. All right, cool. All right, once you get the gasket nice and straight, you can start threading these bolts in by hand. And sometimes you gotta do a little shimmy on the intake. There we go. And luckily these are not torque to yield or one-time use bolts, so we can reuse them. They only get held in at about 10 foot pounds. They're really small. All right, with everything started, you can go down with the gun. I have this on the lowest setting possible. There's a little bit of a sequence to the torque. So that is one. And we have two, three, four. And basically we're just going like inside out. If you guys don't have a sequence for things, sometimes it's not that important. Like this probably wouldn't matter much, but just go inside out. That works. All right, everything is back together. And I did find these tubes here with these block off caps. And that's where the recirculating factory blow off would go back into the air. But we want big whoosh sounds. So anyway, let's see how this thing runs. Pretty good. All right. <laughs> Pretty uneventful, fires right up. This engine is whisper quiet. Runs so, so good. There's never any smoke out of the exhaust or anything. It's just solid and I love it. All right, let's go for a couple more rips and see if anything's cleared up with our fresh plugs and keep going. I also read that some tuners set their cars up to have traction control off and the drivetrain to be in R mode. Let's see if that makes any real difference here. So I wanna make sure, okay, I'm at max boost. I don't want a max boost. Okay, there we go, stock boost now. It actually cut power. It cut power right there. Okay. Yeah, some kind of safety is going on. It rips though. <laughs> oh man, this is a very fun car. It handles so, so well. You know, 38,000 miles. I mean, it just feels like, like a new car. I mean, it's just, it's just nice. God, I never thought I'd be like into GTRs, but I'm, I'm kind of into GTRs now. Now from a YouTube standpoint, I'm, I'm probably close to a decade too late. A lot of YouTubers were buying GTRs a long, long time ago, but I don't care about that. If you guys see the cars on my channel, I, uh, I just don't care. I buy what I want. I got a 15 passenger Chevy van, a DeLorean, a GTR, a bunch of other cars that absolutely make no sense at all. They don't fit. They don't fit into anything other than I just like them. All right, it's the next day. I was actually able to get a dyno appointment at Cannonball this morning. So I figured we'll stick the wide man in the tailpipe on the dyno a little bit of a more controlled situation there. Uh, but first I stopped by the Nissan dealer and I wanted to see if they could change the odometer from kilometers to miles. They said they're completely locked out of the computer because there's a tune on the car and they recommended I have to go back to stock, then they can get in and change the odometer, something like that. So hopefully we can figure that out because this needs to say like 38 or, or 39 at this point. All right, we're here at Cannonball. There's my GTR. I'm in a different car. A broken McLaren, to be exact. Ooh, another GTR. I think those are the factory wheels, I think, from the 2009. So I figured while I'm going to Cannonball Garage, I better bring the McLaren over here because if you guys saw the update video, I have this ESC fault and it needs to be reset with the McLaren computer. It has to do with steering angle. So I left the airbag off in case we need to make slight adjustments. Not gonna lie, this is a, a little surreal right here. My McLaren and GTR. It's a little cliche, but I, I never thought this would be possible. Like in a million years. But honestly, these are like the real McLaren owners. That's an Alpha GTR. I just buy cheap broken stuff with kind of high miles. And if you guys have a broken McLaren you need fixed or one you want to go much, much faster, Cannonball Garage in Gilberts, Illinois is the place to go. They do it all, including complete engine builds like the engines for Tavares' McLarens, including his P1. They can also tune your McLaren and much, much more. I'll drop a link down below if you want to learn more. All right guys, so we're at Cannonball. I pulled in, I was talking to Ivan and Arnie and they're like, do you wanna give this an inspection and see what we can discover? And I wasn't expecting that. I thought we were just gonna do some dyno runs, but 
When Ivan wants to look at your GTR, you do not say no. So from under the hood, I, all I see are blow-off valves and intakes. I don't know if you see anything else right off the bat. So yeah, you've got uh, intake tubes, you've got uh, blow-off valves. The blow-off valves are uh, vent to atmosphere. Generally, that creates an issue on cars that are uh, mass airflow. Um, this may have been converted to speed density. If it is converted to speed density, then that shouldn't be a problem at all. Um, pop off the uh, little cover here, just take a look. I want to see the map sensor over there. But uh, overall, it looks like a, a basic build. Yeah. Looks like someone did some off-roading. Yeah, she's dirty. She's a winter vehicle, got the winter <laughs> tires on here. It was in Canada for like 10 years. Okay, yeah, that would explain that. Which kind of explains it, yeah. A little bit of an oil leak on this side. Your oil hose. Yep. Your serpentine belt looks like it could use a refreshment. This thing's actually really clean for being a, a Canadian car. Usually these cars like rust out like a Sentra. This is like the greatest winter car that you can't drive in the winter. But they, <laughs> they must have really kept up on the underbody washes. If it's high enough up in Canada, they don't use salt, they use sand. So it doesn't eat the cars like it does here in the Rust Belt. And Ivan, I was telling you, it's got the Chef Stage 1 Trans. Can you tell if it has an updated bell housing? I, I read a lot about the early bell housing issues. I felt the bell housing already, and it's tight. It's hard to see without pulling that flange off what's going on. It's in the bearing in the back, so it's, yeah. From, from here, I cannot, but I can tell you that as of right now, your bell housing is fine. Okay. And what, what was the issue? Like, what would happen there? So basically, the bearing back here would start to spin in the housing and wallow out, and then, you know, you had a bunch of extra play that would start to uh, wear on the shaft. The shaft could break. The driveline damper that's in between the engine and this shaft that goes out the back, that could end up uh, okay. having some issues too. And if we had that off, what would we be able to see that would indicate it's a newer updated part? So there's a special cutout where the bearing goes in that keeps it from rotating. So uh, yeah, unfortunately that's all covered up by that flange so we can't see it at this point. Yeah, I was thinking while it was getting the Shep transmission, maybe they updated the bell housing up front. And maybe they did. We'll have to pull the drive shaft one day and see. But luckily there's no play. That's kind of your first indication that it's going out. This is the fuel tank and this is going to be where they would have put fuel pumps in on this side. So if it is leaking from the top, oh. it would come down over here. Oh, okay. Maybe um, that is what it is. I. We I know I was spraying brake clean everywhere to sure. clean everything, so. It just still has, uh, you know, almost like it's liquid. Right. You pop out that back corner seat and take a look and see if there's any liquid up top. Okay. Your exhaust is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. It's got some pretty bad exhaust, doesn't it? Somebody muffler shopped a couple of straight pipes in there instead of the muffler sections. Yeah, it boggles the mind how someone could do this to a GTR. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Poor man's performance exhaust. I like it. <laughs> he was being fiscally responsible. Fiscally responsible <laughs> in these times, yes. We've got uh, intake tubes. We've got a, a mid pipe in here. Uh, not too many mods. Uh, overall, it looks pretty decent. I think it's going to be all right. Cool. We'll, we'll pop that seat cover off, take a look, and see if we've got a fuel leak. If not, uh, we'll get in on the dyno. Cool. And she's dry up top. Yeah. So, yeah. Probably just some trans fluid that uh, made its way there. Okay, look at so, that. Look at that. You made, you made a penny. Lucky nice. penny right here. I'm turning a profit already on this car. I love this car so much. I just never thought. I mean, I'm I'm in love, guys. I'm in love. It's just so mean and timeless. So my wife actually drove this car with one of my kids like to run an errand and I'm like, "What do you think?" She's like, "It's like just like a normal car." She's like, "This is a performance car." She's like, "You just get in and drive it and it's just normal and not loud." I'm like, "Yeah." And it's insanely fast. Right now, Ivan's just setting up the car on the dyno, so he has to go at a consistent speed. And I finally have an all-wheel drive car on an all-wheel drive dyno. We're gonna go for our first real run. I have the wide band hooked up. I don't know.
know if it cut out. Did it, did it flash the check engine light? I am not 100% sure, but it didn't seem like it. I was watching the O2 sensor, and that fell out partially through the run there. Darn. So, uh, yeah, a lot to try and keep my eyes on here. That's why yeah. data logging would be uh, really right, good right, right now. So Ivan hooked up his computer, and the, the tune is locked. Like, we can't get in at all. We don't have the passcode. But Arnie got a hold of the place that did the transmission, which is also local, and they said they tuned it. So we're trying to get this thing unlocked. I don't know if we'll be able to do it though remotely. So here's our power numbers here. Max power 523, max torque 532. Wow. I think that's really good. Is that is that pretty good? Yeah, that's really good. I okay. like it. It's I mean it's probably probably is a solid tune. Yeah. It's got the right octane in there. It'll be good to go. Wow, that's a great first run. I have the GoPro hooked up on the cluster, so you guys probably know right now if the check engine light flashed more than we do. I'm going to sit shotgun for this run. Hopefully the O2 sensor doesn't come out, but I am manning the wideband gauge. I will man the gauge cluster here. What's a, what's a decent AFR on 93 for one of these? I mean, it should be in the uh, probably the high 11s, maybe low 12s. Okay. Wouldn't be too terribly bad. Fourth gear pull, we'll get it around 2,000 RPMs, floor it, start logging. 11, 7, 11, 8, 11, 9, 12, 0, 12, 0. yeah. No check engine light, did not flash, so okay. either we're making less load on the dyno, maybe it's colder, it's not knocking, maybe the fuel's worked its way out, bad fuel, or something yeah. along those lines but yeah overall that looked really good okay yeah this was spot on we were 11 9 12 the whole run yeah that's perfect yeah. it is very cold today oh very cold it's like i don't know what is it 25 degrees out or 30 degrees or something it's freezing uh which would help reduce knock i have driven this car quite a bit i've cycled through a lot of fuel at this point so it could have been that it had like three gallons of really old fuel and it just took basically an entire tank to get it out. How do we do on power there? Same, 527. We actually made more power. Uh, 526 torque. Torque went down just a little bit. Yeah. It just hit a little less on the bump, but smoothed out up top. I mean, that was a, that was a decent run. That's consistent. Uh, we've got... Uh, you know, the fans on here, so it's staying nice and cold. We're not going to run into a heat soak you would typically have with your factory intercooler. So I think so far, so good. 527 all wheel horsepower for our base number. And I'm going to do a bunch of modifications, some pretty popular ones that make this GTR produce a lot more power. So that is very, very strong. You figure stock, these have the 2009s have like 480 at the crank. So that's a, what do, what do these dyno totally bone stock usually? Oh my gosh, I don't think we've had a totally bone <laughs> know, <right>? stock <laughs> GTR on a dyno in forever. So yeah. I wouldn't even like hazard four, a guess. Probably 400-ish. Right? Honestly, they, they do dyno pretty close to advertised horsepower. Most cars do. Um, there's not a ton of driveline loss in there. So, you know, yeah. I would expect to, you know, probably 450-ish or so okay. factory. If you guys are curious what settings we're using on the dyno, we are putting the transmission into R mode and turning the traction control completely off. And Ivan was telling me if he was drag racing the car, he would actually put the suspension in comfort mode. And if we don't switch the traction control off, it kind of does it anyway for us. It just freaks out, throws an ABS light, and then it's off. So that's all you got to do for these for dyno mode. Right now we let it cool down for only about five minutes. So we're going to do a pull and then we're going to do another pull back to back to see if the flashing check engine light comes on. Uh, things will be a little bit hotter and then we'll know if it really is retarding the timing or detecting knock one of those. All right, we're off. Oh, there it goes. It did it? Yep. Yeah, okay. So we hit a limp mode too. Yeah, AFR was spot on on that one. It was still good. And we're at the stock boost level as well, or, at, or what I think to be stock. So yeah, Sean, 15 is the first setting, and then we can go up to like probably 17 and a half and then 20. So I don't know if that's what they came with from the factory. That seems seems about right. So let's see what uh, where it decided to limp right at about 5,400 RPMs. It basically went into limp at that point.
Were those both good? So the first one was good, and it actually, it looks like it made the best power yet, 534 and 542 torque, but then the next run, it limped right up at the top. So there's yeah. something, something is going on for sure. It was a different area where it limped too, so. Okay. Look at the, that, that run was fantastic. Yeah, this was, look at this. So yeah, the green run was the run that we had the issue with right here yep. so that was the green run and then right after that we did a 534 that was our highest dyno of the day yeah you can see you can actually see the run just sets up on top of everything yeah yeah that was a great run and then the very next run should be the dark blue run yep. cuts yep. out right yeah. there so outside of manually checking with the wideband we can't data log since we're locked out of the computer uh so we'll call it a day uh, i think the engine and everything is super healthy on this car it seems I'd say fine so. uh and we don't know what limiter they put in there so i'm going to try and find out that the place that did the tune is not too far so i'll see if they can unlock it and we can kind of tell what's going on if they can unlock the logging we'll have some good info i went and got fresh gas i haven't said they always have good luck at this gas station right by their shop with and having good gas so why not and then you know we got to try launch mode so we have to go off with the traction control and r for the transmission all right so now i hit the brake and hold the gas <laughs> That's awesome! Is that your first GTR launch? Dude, yes. Me too. <laughs> that was amazing. Oh man, that's just perfect. Did you feel it starting to get a little sideways? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That no, it's spun nuts. on. <laughs> oh, oh man. Snow tires. <laughs> snow tires. Snow tires are basically drag radials at the end of the day. They're very, you know, they're gummy. Just like a drag radius. Oh, I love this thing. That was nuts, dude. And then it didn't stop, it just kept going. Yeah, no, it just, it never stops pulling. Stock turbos with the stock cats. This thing rips, it handles well. Wow. I mean, it's just, it's drivable, it's comfortable. The stereo is good. It's just, this is a great car, guys. I completely understand, like, the craziness over GTRs after owning one now for, like, a week. <laughs> Well, it's the next day and I went through about another half tank of fuel in this yesterday. Cannonball is kind of far away from me and I can't get this check engine light to come back on when I go wide open throttle. It seems to have cleared up, which would indicate that we had some bad gas. And funny story, uh, I let my wife take one of my kids in the GTR yesterday to run an errand and then I had my other kids in the other truck because it's got the little baby seat in there. And uh, a couple hours went by and I'm driving and I pass a red GTR and I go to my kid in the truck and I'm like, oh my gosh, look at a red GTR. And, and then I realized it was, it was my wife. <laughs> I'd like forgotten, I'm such an idiot. My kid's like, that's mom. <laughs> so anyway, my wife has been driving this every once in a while because I never replaced my red CTS-V wagon, which was my daily driver. So the next video on the channel is going to be of my new daily driver. And if you guys like the GTR, this is different, but also the same twin turbo v6 all-wheel drive and it can be really really fast so i hope you guys tune in for the next video i have a bunch of parts on order for this gtr so we will be getting right back into it as soon as the parts come to legit street quarters so i hope you guys really enjoyed this video if you did give it a big thumbs up share the video with your friends subscribe if you're new to the channel if you just started watching the videos you can hit that button it's totally free and i really appreciate it most importantly have a fantastic day and I'll see all of you in the next video. And although we And although we fixed the And although we fixed the noises. I am so well. I was going to say most of it could just stay up front but I'm back. I gotta say, I'm finding a lot of really easy. I gotta say, I'm finding a really lot. This car was, this car was very, this car was dealer maintained. There's a lot of boosted cars that are set up this way. In my experience, it doesn't make a huge difference. Yeah. Five more to go. And then these plugs are ready for the eventual. Yeah. And that's what they did. So when this crossed over into camp, so when this crossed over, so okay. when Ivan wants to look at your GTR, you do not say no.
Or wait, you right? Did I say that right? You do not say no. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm like, is that flipped? <laughs> uh, found another hitchhiker. Where, where are you headed to, boy? Texas. Or, right. uh, or some other place that's not where we're at right now. <laughs> I'm on it. It's freezing out here, man. <laughs> All right, if you guys are sticking around past the bloopers, I'll give you some sneak peeks of what's going on in the shop and everything I'm working on right now. We have big breaks for the Eclipse. We have lots and lots of performance parts for the Cobra's transmission right over there. Here's the GTR, I just filmed the outro in front of it. It's in the same spot. The SVT Lightning engine is taped off, ready for paint. And then after paint is all this stuff and all of this. I'm having a custom air filter made for the Porsche 911 so we can shut this hatch, so that's coming. My Turbo Trans Am WS6 just sits in the shop looking pretty. So does my DeLorean, except it just sits here and breaks, so I have to fix some stuff that'll be in a video. The CL65 is outside with no coil packs. I shipped those out to get looked at, inspected. Hopefully that's the issue. My E55 5 AMG station wagon is at Fluid Motor Union. I'm gonna be picking that up soon and showing him the GTR. We might work together on something on that. So anyway, lots going on. Hope you guys really enjoyed this. Thanks again for sticking around even past the bloopers. You guys are the best and I'll see you all next time.